They're responsible for some of the most iconic superhero movies of the 21st century, and their next project, Rebel Moon, is a space opera that takes us to a whole new galaxy. Please welcome director Zack Snyder and producer Deborah Snyder. Welcome to the IGN studio. Awesome, Thanks awesome. For us. So cool to have you here. So last night, opening night live at Gamescom, you showed the trailer. I was I was fortunate enough to be there, so I got a look at it. Looked very cool. I think we'll be bringing that up in just a moment. But let's begin at the beginning. I, Rebel Moon was famously an idea for Star Wars. What changes have you been able to make now that it's no longer tied to an existing universe? Well, it's, uh, it was an evolution anyway, you know, like when you, we started working on the idea um, before even it was a Star Wars movie in my mind, it was, you know, a put a team together movie. It was, I, I'm a huge fan of, um, there's an adult illustrated fantasy magazine called Heavy Metal mm -hmm. that I always was in love with. It, just the tone of that really was inspirational to me. Um, even when I was in the early talks uh, with Kathleen Kennedy about maybe making a Star Wars movie, I would say things like, maybe it could be rated R, you know, and, <laughs> and they would say, yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so I knew that it was going to be, it was going to be a uh, bit of a, a slog. Sure. But then when, after the sale and, you know, they had their own sort of vision for what the Star Wars universe would be, mm -hmm. it was clear to me pretty much at that point that it wasn't going to be, um, you know, anything to do with this idea. Mm -hmm. And Debbie was super happy about that. I was she really happy. Really. Well, I felt like he envisioned this as something that was wholly original. And I felt like I know after working a decade on DC, what canon means and what it means to the fans. And I just felt like there would be too many rules and that he could really kind of go crazy if it was something that was original and he, you know, the handcuffs were off. Sure, sure, sure. Well, from the footage that we've seen, you know, I'd say it has a very different visual look from Star Wars. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe more uh, like a, a space sword and sandal epic than sci-fi. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, um, it's science fantasy more than, say, hard science fiction. Sure. You know, and I think that that was really what I always wanted to do to begin with, you know. It's more of a knight's tale than, say, a you know, in the in the tradition of uh, even the costumes and everything, I really wanted that this sort of ornate, kind of ancient um, kingdom that they that they that the that the mother world represents uh, was a thing that I was really interested in, and, and sort of aesthetically kind of pursuing. Even the robots are you know seem old. Sure, sure. Uh, and I and I guess that was really a thing that I was inspired by, and kind of kind of chasing uh, in the design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it, it definitely, I mean, it, I think in answer to the uh, original question is it, it, it's gone on a huge evolution since those early days. Sure. You mentioned uh, robots. You got a great cast for this film, by the way. I believe Sir Anthony Hopkins is playing a, a particular robot. Can you, yeah, you can tell us about that character? Yeah, so he plays uh, what we call affectionately Jimmy. That's not his real name, but that's what they, uh, they call the robots, all the robots are Jimmy's. Gotcha. And um, yeah, he plays uh, one of what, a pretty kind of typical battle robot in this world. Uh, the only thing that's interesting about these robots is that uh, after the king um, and Isa are killed, and, and the queen are killed, the, um, the robots whose initial sort of purpose was to protect the royal family, they kind of don't know what to do themselves and so they end up kind of becoming these sort of conscientious objectors. They don't really fight anymore. And so there's like a, this whole journey of discovery that uh, that uh, Jimmy's on, the Anthony Hopkins robot, it's on. But he's like one of many, like he's like this one of many robots that would kind of be in this same moral quandary that he's in. Can you tell us more about the Imperium, the sort of like evil empire at the center of Rebel Moon? Yeah, so the mother, we, I, affectionately we call the mother world, um, and their forces are an ancient uh, civilization that have uh, over the years uh, sort of been led by a single king uh, or line of kings. Mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, they sort of have used up all the resources on their own planet and then basically set off into the stars and basically have been collecting uh, and expanding for thousands of years. Interesting. Um, Sophia Batella leads the warriors as Korra. 
Yeah. Uh, how'd you end up casting Sophia? What was it like working with her? Uh, Sophia's amazing. Uh, I had her in mind really from the beginning. Very I would tell so. Debbie about, oh, I really want Sophia to be this character. And, and you know, everyone was like, okay, that could be cool, but we should probably look for, like, you know, do, like, a real audition and, <laughs> you know. Go through the motions. Go through the, yeah, go through the, and I mean, I was like, okay, well, sure, but and I'm we pretty. we tested five women. Yeah. Um, and Sophia really just shined through because, you know, it's such a difficult role because her character is so complex. She's also the heart of the film, but she also, the physicality required um, to do the role is just, it was so important to us that you, it was believable that she was this like amazing warrior. And she has a dance background right. and um, incredibly, like she learned all the choreography so quick and she wanted to do all of the fighting herself. And she did other than one, we threw her, we were gonna throw her character off the side of a scaffolding. And, uh, and we were all like, that's not really safe for you to do. She wanted to do it. But everything else, she did all her own fighting. Interesting. Uh, so Rebel Moon has been announced it's going to be a two-parter. What was the reasoning behind that? Um, and do you know the total runtime of them both put together? Uh, movie two, we're still, still working cutting, on. so I don't gotcha. know the exact runtime. But they're about two hours each, gotcha. the, the, the movies themselves, mm -hmm. right around two hours. I think movie two is under two hours um, but uh, right now. But. Um, uh, so, oh, what was the first part of the question? Uh, well, just yeah, what was the reasoning, the thinking behind that? Is it just because you needed oh, why? Yeah. more time to? Oh, yeah. So I had written a pretty long script, 200-page yes. script. And the cool thing about Netflix was there's, uh, when I said, you know, maybe one of the, may, maybe a way to go is to just break it into two movies because um, for sure I could cut it to one, but it's going to kind of make the movie very sort of by the numbers, you know, when you get that, especially a movie like this that's, sort of genre specific, like we know the mission, got to put the team together, you got to prepare for battle and then fight them. Not that that's what's going to happen, but that <laughs> becomes kind of obvious. And then when you really put the screws to something like that, uh, the beats become really um, set in stone and you can, there's not a lot of room to move around. And I think by letting it be two movies, it really let us kind of have a lot more character and a lot more worlds to visit and just be more overall exotic and unexpected. Well, now you mentioned, um, you explained an opening night live last night. There's a Rebel Moon game also coming from Super Evil Megacorp, developer of the very good uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate game, which is on Apple Arcade. I recommend it. Anything else, anything else you can tell us about the game of Rebel Moon? Well, one thing I could say about it is that the guys um, over there have been incredibly um, reverent and um, faithful to the source material, and they've been incredibly inclusive and, and really want to talk with me constantly about mythology and about the canon and about the world. And so I would say that um, though, it, you know, as a game, it really will expand sort of the mythology of the universe and not even though it's definitely uh, sort of an add-on to the universe I didn't expect, it was a cool place where we thought to explore other things that are happening in the Rebel Moon universe. And um, the guys have been great to go, I, I'd say like, guys, we can't, we can't do <laughs> You know, we can't do that. And then they'd come back, well, well what about this? Mm. And so we were really, I think, able to land on something that was really, um, world building, but also consistent with the with, with the world. So that is fun. Very cool. Well, we're here at the world's biggest gaming convention, so I have to ask you: uh, Is there any gaming property that you both think would make a great movie? There are. So <laughs> well, there are a lot. I mean, we've talked about a bunch of. Uh, I mean, you know, Gears has always come up. Yeah. You know in sort of our circle. Interesting. Uh, and I, I was a fan of the game. Um, so, I mean, off the top of my head, that one. I was always interested in the Halo yeah. uh, franchise. So that was something that I'd always, I mean, and they, of course, kind of made that, but <clears throat> it was something that I always thought could be incredible. 
Well, thank you both, both so much. I'm really excited to watch uh, Rebel Moon when it premieres on Netflix later this year. Thank awesome. You so thank you so yeah. much. This is great. Thank so you. fun. Uh, viewers, you can take your first step into a larger world when Rebel Moon premieres on Netflix December 22nd. In the meantime, stick around for more Gamescom Studio right here on IGN.